The statements made by Energize Health and its clients do not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. Before undertaking any course of treatment, you should consult with your doctor. Transformation and fat loss are based on starting health metric calculations. Results may vary. We are John and Chelsea Jubilee. What we have is simple, it's scientific, it's sustainable. We have created Energized Health with the desire to change the world, starting with the most important one, which is yours. Our patent-pending science of intercellular hydration will transform and supercharge your cells, resulting in optimal health. Log on now to EnergizedHealth.com. That's EnergizedHealth.com. Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Gladius. Gladius is your full-service data solutions company, from custom software and AI to database content management. Find out what Gladius can do for your business or ministry today. Visit GladiusSolutions.com and set up a demo. Hello and welcome to another GEB America podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Gunn. Welcome to all those who are listening. I want to give a special shout out to those most recently growing audience on our Pray.com audience maybe you're tuning in from there or from spotify or from apple Podcasts, wherever your audience wherever you're where you're finding us today we're so glad you tuned in um little shout out as well for our sponsors energize health and then gladius technology solutions both of those we're so appreciative for your your help getting us um supporting us for more information about them please go to energizehealth.com or gladiussolutions.com and uh, find out more about them so my guest today is a, a visionary, a leader, an entrepreneur, a wonderful person who cares deeply about the people God places in her sphere of influence. Please help me welcome to the podcast, the GB America podcast, Shannon Wilburn. <laughs> Thank welcome, you. I feel welcome. like I can say goodbye now because you set the expectation really high. <laughs> <laughs> and seen. <laughs> And thank you. <laughs> yes, and we're good. All right, good. No, seriously, we're so glad to have you, Shannon. And uh, it's, you know, before we start here, it, it is amazing to realize we had a uh, chance to be on a little TV show five years ago. And I, I can't believe it's been five years. Yeah. Um, but uh, that time was was something special. I really appreciated getting to know you then. And even since then, as you said so well, a lot has changed. Yes. Um, so we'll get into that as well. But let's just jump into my first question here, which basically... Um, take us take us back on your journey. Take us back to maybe where did uh, where did your kind of where did your decision to follow you know Jesus and like where did that kind of hap- happen and how did that influence you know your your walk yep. um, into today? Yep, I feel like um, I was born into a Christian household, and um, but we were based on what my mom and dad have told us. We were really Sunday morning Christians, and. Um, my dad went through a really hard time in his life um, when we were entering junior high, my sister and I. And what I mean by a hard time in his life, at the age of 33, uh, my sister and I were 12. He was a CFO of an oil and gas company, kind of an up and coming, not not kind of, he was an up and coming, very smart business professional, climbing the corporate ladder. Um, He had just done something. He had taken a company public while doing something. This was something um, my mom can't really remember what it is, but it was something that had never been done before. But he was meeting with people like the Rockefellers and Ross Perot. And he had back in the early 80s had $100,000 in stock options. And so he was doing very well at the age of 33. Well, he went, um, he started having numbness in his legs um, on a ski trip and Mm. came back and started going to the doctor and found out that he was, um, he had the progressive form of multiple sclerosis and he went from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair in the span of six weeks, went on disability Mm. insurance, left that huge cushy job where we had, Um, We had just built a house around an atrium. We had two brand new cars in the driveway Mm -hmm. and I had clothes in my closet that still had tags on them. We were living that life and everything changed. We sold the cars, we sold the house, we moved into a rent house. We, and my mom went to work. So everything Mm -hmm. changed. Well, what also changed is our church attendance. (laughs) And so we Mm -hmm. went from being what was called Sunday morning Christians back 
back when True. there were where you went to church three times a week if you were a real right. Christian. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Yes, so yes. that is what we started doing. And um, my dad's outlet, he was still mentally absolutely capable and there and smart. He It started turning to um, Jesus. And mm. he prayed like no one else and read why bad things happen to good people. And, you know, we started yeah. just, he started uh, being in charge of a ministry at our church called World Bible School, where he was bringing to people to Christ there. And so it was kind of this transformation from entering junior high until I'm going to cry. Probably I haven't told this story in a while, but it's all good. Um, where he became the leader of our family and he was a leader in our family, but was not leading us closer to Christ in the first 12 mm. years of our life. And the and the second part of our time at home, when I say our, my twin sister and I, um, right. it he did a 180. <laughs> so much so wow. that I was resentful of it at times. <laughs> like, <laughs> here's, here is um, back before the internet, you know, he would print out anything and everything he could on Christianity, on, um, you know, picking out a spouse and like he, <laughs> he became our teacher. And I wish I knew we were going to talk about this. Cause I would show you, I think in my cabinet, right above my, my oh, wow. desk, I have, um, I have, um, a, it's like a folder. It's a compilation of articles he wrote and things he printed off for us to read with his wow. notes on it. And he just, yeah. he wanted us to know and love the Lord. And, um, and I really took it for granted that my dad was doing that. And I was kind of resentful of it when I was in junior high and high school, like, oh my gosh, we have to have a family devotional, Ugh, eh, you know, and, yes. um, you want me to be home two nights a week so we can have family time and you want, cause we know everything at that age, right? That, and we, you won't we let me go to so R rated much. movies. And that was when PG 13 <laughs> came out. We weren't even as 17 year olds, we weren't really even allowed to go to PG 13 and he, right. he became very strict. Um, but I look back on that and those were transformational, very formative years for yeah. my spiritual growth. Another thing that he did, he and my mom, I'm saying he, but it was he and my mom, but he just, sure. he was the one who pushed it because my mom was working. Um, right. He taught us to tithe. He told us this is a biblical principle. And um, so when I went to work at the age of 15, I would come home with an actual paycheck right back when we used yeah. to get before direct right. deposit. And I'm aging myself on this already, Stephen. Hey, but... I'm with you too. I'm with you. <laughs> so I would, we would hand him our paychecks for, for working 20 hours a week or something like that. And he would, he would say, okay, 70% of this is going in your college savings. 20% is for you to spend and 10% and he would give us cash. He would give us 30%. 10% is going in the plate on Sunday morning. And so wow. it was the teaching, consistent yeah. teaching over time that now, I mean, when I got married, it was very easy for me to say, well, this isn't my money. This is the Lord's money. Um, yeah. So anyway, so wow. that, it has made it really easy as an adult to be able to be um, generous, I guess, with yes. um, with money because I know it's really not my money. Um, so... Then I went to college. My sister and I went to college at Abilene Christian University. I met, um, I met who is now my husband um, in the first week of school. Uh, we didn't oh, wow. start dating until like the end of my freshman year um, okay. and got married. And my husband wanted to be a minister, so a youth minister. So um, we got married right after my sophomore year. I look back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was one month 20 when I got married and because my husband was graduating. So, um, and then we moved to Tulsa. I was a youth minister's mm. wife um, at the Park Plaza Church of Christ in okay. Tulsa uh, for 12 years. Then he moved into community outreach ministry and then he's been the senior preaching pastor since... 2005, I think. So coming up on 20 years. 20 years, yeah. yeah. Move locate, we branched, move locations. Right. And so, right. yeah. So, so I'm the preacher's wife. I'm the wow. pastor's wife, but I'm also an entrepreneur. So my church gives me 
lots of leeway when it comes to church leadership stuff. I really get to do what I want to do because they they knew that um, yeah. I, I had this other thing or these multiple other things on the side right. where I've been growing businesses where I get to use my leadership with my staff, mm-hmm. with my franchisees and point people to Jesus. I love that. I love it. And that's such a great, what a great way to walk into that too, that you're already setting the understanding yeah. and knowing that, Hey, listen, this is not going to be the t- traditional pastor's wife yeah. where I come in and, you know, sit for these meetings and just do whatever. Yeah. It's like, there's going to be, you know, I'm, you're, I'm here. I'm obviously yeah. supporting him. And there were several, but... several years of youth ministry where I was the unpaid girls youth minister. <laughs> Right. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We're paying you. you it's, a, it's a twofer. It's right. a twofer deal, yes. right? Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, awesome to look back on now, maybe, but the, ju- the journey there, obviously. Um, well, so let's, okay. So that kind of, that helped, I think, uh, set up a little foundation there. Sure. Um, so now with that, obviously it sounds like you really, I love, I love the way you shared that, like the 30, the 30%, 70%, that what a great concept and foundation for you to learn how to take that. And, and it's like, this money's not even, I'm going to see that money. Yeah. And this, I'm going to just do what I want, what I budget for, or what I want to get candy or right. you know, buy something, save up for some purse or some whatever yep. that you wanted to do. And then also 10% is there's no negotiation on it. It's, it's going to the Lord. Um, how did that principle and maybe, and maybe that journey, how did that set you up for the journey of walking into um, the launching of just between friends. I mean, that's obviously kind of my frame of reference of you and launching yep. and, and the connection to Tulsa. Yep. And maybe there's something else before that. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, I journey, but w- when I will also share this story, when, uh, when yeah. I was the summer before I got married, mm-hmm. <laughs> my dad, like I said, he was very like, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. And you know, yes. um, he said, he said, Shannon, there are two main reasons why people get divorced, money and sex. And so I'm giving you three books to read this summer before you get married. Two of them were on debt-free living and one of them was on sex (laughs) because he wanted me to go into the marriage prepared and informed Mm -hmm. informed about what debt can do and how you get into debt and how not to get into debt. And so, you know, I'm a big proponent of professional development now. And I wonder, is that, is it because that, you know, you, you only grow as much as whatever you're reading or listening to. And uh, my dad started us off early with that. So, um, I think, you know, we went from my dad making six figures in the early eighties to my mom going to work. And so it changed our life back when we were in junior high. Um, and we started, shopping consignment because my dad, again, the financial mastermind of the, right. of the home, um, right. he said, uh, girls, here is your clothing budget and you have this amount of money to spend this year on your clothing and you can spend it all in January or you can make it last through, through December. Mm. But when prom comes around and you want That's a prom right. dress and you don't have any Come money on. left, you're, you're going to be out of luck. And oh. um, so it taught us budgeting, right? Yeah, and so good. part of budgeting for clothes was, well, we know we can't pay retail <laughs> with this, with this yes. limited amount. Yes. So right. we've got to figure out a way to stretch our dollar. And so our mom introduced us to consignment stores. Um, and so we would go to the consignment store and she would say, only buy this if you love it. Like you have to love yeah. it because our, because our money was just so limited. And right. um, so we were introduced to consignment in junior high and it carried throughout when um, I got married, I was still shopping consignment for myself. And I knew marrying a youth minister was not a vow of poverty, but kind of. And <laughs> um, so my elementary education degree in Oklahoma was also not going to contribute in a significant way. Um, and so I was like, we're just going to have to make ends meet through being creative and budget friendly. And that meant yeah. when we had kids, we started shopping consignment. Well, I was trying to stay home as, um, you know, be a stay at home mom. So I had left my teaching um my teaching, the teaching profession to stay home with my kids. And Mm -hmm. I was looking for ways to 
to make a little bit of money to supplement the family sure. income back before remote work was a thing. And so right. you can, <laughs> I keep saying all of these things, but so much. It's so much true changed. though. Yeah. Yeah. So, like favorite for, for people like to listening, like, well, remote work is not, no, 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 no. It was not around. Part of 2020, yeah. really not a lot of people did remote work. Right. It was, it, yeah. you'd have a special exception to get to, get to work at home. Yes. So. Yeah. So, um, but I, I tell my mom, if you hear of anything that I could do from home, please let me know. And she called me one day and gave me the idea for just between friends based on an experience that she had had. Uh, but this mm. was small business didn't have a presence on the internet. Email had come out in 1996. This was 1997. And gotcha. um, you just, you, you would hear about something, but you would have to problem solve around it yourself. And so I asked a friend of mine from church, Devin Tackett, if she would you know, what she thought of this idea because she was the biggest bargain hunter that I knew. And when I say this idea, what I mean is a consignment sale, not a brick and mortar location, a consignment sale where families come together in a welcoming, friendly yeah. venue to sell and buy gently used children's and maternity clothes, toys and baby equipment. So mm -hmm. um, we... Devin and I convinced 17 of our friends in September of 1997 to bring us their gently used children's and maternity clothes. We got all of that stuff ready. We knew we didn't want this event to be a garage sale. We wanted, we knew we wanted it to be upscale. So we made these A-frame signs that we put on the corners. They were not garage sale signs. They were painted really cute. Uh, for yes. those of you who remember Mary Englebright, that was kind of the, the look and feel for the signs. Yes. Um, and we hosted... We had four or five racks of children's and maternity clothes in my living room. Someone tried to buy my couch. We used <laughs> we used the kitchen drawers as cash drawers, and we sold two thousand dollars worth of merchandise in that um, in those two days. Wow. And I made one hundred and fifty dollars, and Devin made one hundred and fifty dollars, and that was the start of just between friends. And that's the business that I just sold in December of twenty twenty two with yes. forty two million in system wide sales, one hundred and fifty wow. locations in thirty three states. So Come the on. Lord was very present in that business, and still is, and um, yeah. just guiding. We we did a lot of praying for wisdom and revelation in the business sure. and, and he gave it to us generously. Yeah. And he brought the right people along Absolutely. all the different fran franchisees yes. and the people that come alongside. Yeah. And, and the, the executive team, the, the advisory team. board. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, my advisory board. I can't begin to tell you, like if you were in the franchising space and I told you who was on my advisory board, your mind would be blown because anytime, like, well, anytime I told people like these people are on my advisory board, they'll be like, what, what, how did you get them? I'm like, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Jesus is time. faithful. Yes. Yeah. So it was, it oh, that's was, good. Yeah, it was, it was good. Not that we didn't have lots of failure and challenges in those sure. 26 or 27 years, but, um, it, it was a really fun ride. Yeah. And I, I'm sure the lessons you've learned out of that are just, you know, again, you've been able to carry those on yep. and, and share, you know, with your kids and your, you know, friends. And now and, I'm doing and, executive uh, coaching. And now you get to so, take that and learn, yeah. which is, which is right into our <laughs> next, my next pivot. That was perfect yeah. setup there. Um, so obviously like, uh, that was kind of my next question was just what, you know, obviously the whole concept of, of you learning to hear the voice and to be obedient and to serve and just basically to like, you know, give, because that's what you just knew to do. You just surrendered to what the Lord was, was telling you to do. Yeah. Was, tried. was that I hard? Tried, I will say. Well, I know as, as we're human, human as we are, yeah. right? Like, but like just the consistency of learning that, that style of living, of learning, living in that place of, of serving the Lord. Um, how, how was that journey up and to the point of the of selling it? And then now how has it been? You know, you know I will, I'll tell a quick story. So, um, in 2011, um, okay. Devin and I had started both businesses together. We were 50, 50 partners in the Tulsa business, which was the one that started in my living room that went right. on to be at the Tulsa fairgrounds for those who are local. Um, yes. and then the, we started franchising the business in 2003. So we, we ran the Tulsa business for six years 
proved the mm-hmm. concept, helped other people right. do it in other states before we actually franchised it. So um, proved the concept. 2003, we started actually selling franchises, but we started with 10 or 11 locations. Okay. Um, so we had we had the Tulsa business, which we thought at the time it was doing 400,000 in sales at the end. Yeah. I think um, at the end of 2003, we had done... 400,000 in sales. We thought we've, we've capped out in how big the Tulsa sale could get. So let's go ahead and franchise. We'll help people do 400,000 in sales. <laughs> and yeah. um, what we didn't know was that both businesses would continue to rise and grow <laughs> and scale it, ridiculous to a ridiculous amount. So 2011, um, so 2003 to 2011 grew, grew both of those businesses together. At the time, the Tulsa sale was doing 1.4 million in, in um, sales. And wow. so we're like, oh, holy cow, but what was happening? We were, uh, we had all these franchisees over here. 2009, we had sold 30 franchises in one year. We had scaled too quickly and we were starting to experience the unfun side of franchising, which is when franchisees turn on you (laughs) and that rightly so they should have turned on us because we were, we were not doing things really to support. We were doing some things to support them, but we were not doing enough things to support them. Mm -hmm. And that was because our focus was split. And so Devin and Devin and I decided to reorganize the company she was going to take the um, Tulsa business as her 100% business. And I was going to take the franchise system as my 100% okay. business so that we could really focus, be there for our customer base, which was vastly yes. different. Hers were people who wanted to buy gently used, buy and sell gently used children's and maternity clothes, toys and baby equipment. Mine was people who wanted to buy a franchise, go to work for themselves, um, yeah. you know, and help them with legal, legislative, marketing, finance, operations, you know, franchise development, yeah. all that kind of stuff. All that, right. Yeah. And um, I, I couldn't do both. So on the eve of us getting ready to sign paperwork, I called my sister crying. So my sister um, is one of my spiritual mentors in my life. Um, She is also um, crazy enough married to a pastor. (laughs) So we both married pastors. (laughs) I don't think that that was like, uh, I don't think my parents set out to have us marry pastors. It's just what happened. (laughs) But um, yeah, so I called her and was crying. And I was like, I've never run a business by myself, you know, and I was whining and crying and like, what am I thinking? And and she actually got mad at me and she was like, Shannon, you are not running this business by yourself. You are yoked with the Lord. And when you do not know what to do, he is going to be there to carry you. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And it was just this great mental picture of a yoke of oxen. And when yeah. one when one workhorse gets tired, the other it you don't have to bear the whole burden. And yeah. I have come back to that over and over and over and over again. Cause franchising is hard. It is yeah. not for the faint of heart. <laughs> um it is it. it's a challenge. And um leadership is hard. And when you think, boy, I don't know what to do, like, I'm glad this isn't my company, Lord. This is your company. Thank (laughs) you for giving it to me to manage. And I'm going to manage it um, for as long as you want me to be the manager. And when you don't want me to be the manager anymore, you're going to have to show me who's going to be the next manager. And um, so, Lord... I'm coming to you because I don't know what to do. So you better show me the path, light the way, give me, yes. give me direction. Let me sit in your presence um, so that I will know what to do. And that is not normal for people mm. to just not make plans, right? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> cause I'm a planner. Believe me, I'm a three on the Enneagram. So I'm a builder. I'm an achiever. I'm a planner. Let's set a goal. Let's go get it. And, um, it was, it's so refreshing though, when you sit in the presence as a leader and you don't know what to do yet, you have lots of people following you, millions of people, depending on your decision-making that then you're able to really 
run to the Lord's feet and sit there and say, yeah, act like a little kid. Like, Lord, what do you want me to do? Show me your big plan. And um, like, yeah. so she kind yeah. of got onto me in that, in that moment and gave me the encouragement I needed uh, to move forward. Wow. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a great, just another kind of a marker there of having importance of having people around us that are, you know, attuned yes. and can give, give that encouragement. Yes. Can, can call you on the carpet, godly, so to speak, on things. Godly wisdom. You know, godly wisdom. Yeah. Absolutely. That's so good. Well, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pivot a little bit with that. And, um, so there are lots of opportunities in life that we have that challenges as we go through them. Um, what we do with them, right? How we handle, how we walk through them, not just that they happen to us, but we can have, you know, we respond to them. Um, so if you wouldn't mind sharing, um, a little bit about how you took, you know, tragic situation of, of, a, a land that was intended for one, one use, um, and turning that around for something for the Tulsa Jinx community that has turned into a thriving, amazing business and one, which I have to say, my wife absolutely loves <laughs> being a part of what you're doing over there. Yeah. Uh, this the is Creek totally Farm. a God story for sure. So yeah, yeah, you have a little bit of insight. Uh, a little bit, a little, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So <laughs> my, my husband has always been someone who wanted land one day. Um, his parents lived on 600 acres. Uh, they didn't own the 600 acres, but they had access to it. And so when it, we would go, it was owned by family friends. And um, okay. so they lived on two of the acres. And then, of course, had they could go anywhere on the property with the four wheelers. Sure. And so it was like it was ours. Well, we grew up. I mean, I think they moved out there the year that we got married. They moved out to the property in East Texas. And so we would go, you know, four or five times a year to Quitman, Texas. And Quitman, Texas. Quitman, I know where that is. Quitman, <laughs> man, it's a small town outside of the other I small do. town of Mineola outside the other small yes. town of Tyler. So Tyler, which is also minutes. near Sulphur Springs. Yes. Yeah. So Sulphur Springs. In between Tyler yep. and Sulphur Springs. It's called Quitman. So yeah. my grandparents lived in Winsboro, Texas, oh, which no is kidding. just, just South of there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For I think 10, 12, 13 years. I'm like, my dad's parents lived there. And so I, I went, I know right where that in is. The pine, <laughs> in the piney woods, right? All the pine trees. Yes. Yeah. It's awesome. Yes. Texas is beautiful. So we would go there anyway. He, um, absolutely that is where he would, you know, when you get out in nature, sometimes you, you it's so much easier to spend time with the Lord because you're surrounded mm -hmm. by his presence. And, right. um, so we would go to Quitman, he would chop wood, he would tear down the beaver dam, they would clean up the trails, they would mow, brush hog, mm -hmm. you know, all of that use the chainsaw and, <laughs> um, and so that he, he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Totally a guy thing. Um, anyway, so he wanted that here. That was four hours away. Um, right. and so I'm going to try to tell this as a short story because I can, you know, I Understood. love to tell stories. So Stephen, yes. so you're going to have to Understood. stop me, but, um, I'm watching. Yeah, we're good. Okay. The, over, over the course of our marriage, my husband had said, Hey, this property is, for sale, let's go look at it. And what he meant is let's go drive by and peek at it. We would never call. We would just, we just didn't right. have the financial means to even think about it. Um, so, yeah. okay. Fast forward 2012, 2013. Um, Mitch was like, uh, well, the church, uh, not Mitch, but the church, our church family had outgrown our location in Midtown Tulsa. And mm -hmm. um, so we were looking to branch. And um, so we made that move. We, we moved, uh, part of our church family moved to um, a campus on Peoria. The other, another group of people went and planted a church in Jinx which, mm -hmm. um, and they were meeting at a school. So they had been doing that for a couple of years. Um, and I'm not probably, I'm not exactly sure on the time or whatnot, but they had been doing it for a couple of years and they knew they were getting really tired of unloading the trailer every Sunday at a school. And, you know, ha they wanted a place that was theirs where they could sure. host events. They could, um, you know, just not meet in temporary facilities. Right, and so right. the church was looking for land in Jinx. 
Um, and so they found this piece of property. It was 15 acres. It was part of a 40 acre plot that, um, where unfortunately the owner had passed away. And, um, so we knew that the property was available, but also land avail de land developers and Jinx also knew that the property was available. And so right. the 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 church was looking at it, you know, do we do we buy this? We ended up not buying the 40 acres, but then that land developer came to us and said, okay, 15 of the acres, I can, I'm happy to sell you 15 of the acres. And so our leadership at our Jinx branch was praying about this piece of property. And my husband had brought me by this piece of property because he's like, oh my gosh, we're praying about this. It's it's a beautiful piece of property. It had two mm -hmm. dilapidated houses on it, lots of um, lots of fencing, lots of down trees because the gentleman who had been here was, you know, aging. And sure. um, there were some horses, there were a couple of dilapidated horse barns and anyway, brought brought me out here and said, this is the property that they're looking at. The, the catch was that it was 15 acres, but 13 of it was in the flood, flood plain. So, right. so right. the church, um, over the course of about three or four months prayed about it. And the church leadership decided that this is not the best location for our church. I don't know why that decision was made, but, um, that opened up the opportunity um, for someone else to have it. And the church leadership told my husband on a Friday morning at Bible study, Hey, we're not, we, we don't think this is the best route for us to go. And, uh, Mitch called me that morning. He said, Hey, the church isn't getting that property. And I was like, Oh man, I'm so sorry, honey. I know you loved that. You thought it was beautiful. He said, you think we could get it? <laughs> And I, I started laughing just like that, like, ha, ha, ha. Um, yeah, you're so funny. Yeah, because I knew how much it was. And I was like, I don't think that's going to be in our budget. Uh, we had two kids in college. I look back, I'm like, I can't believe this. this. Um, but anyway, I'm like, I don't even know how to buy land. Can, how much right. do you have to put down? And what, is this, mm -hmm. what does this mean? So it turns out we could not afford it um, on our own. Um, but we figured out pretty quickly that if we split it with someone that, um, that we would be able to afford half of it, putting money down on half of it. Right. So we were, right. we were like, okay, who do I want to be neighbors with? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pick your neighbors. Pick my neighbor, hand yeah. pick. Who do I want to be neighbors, be neighbors with, yeah. with and is willing to pay, you know, X amount right. of dollars for seven and a half yeah. acres or whatever it was going to be. And, um, and I will tell you, the cost of the land was more than the cost of the house we were living in by a hundred thousand mm, dollars. So okay. I'm like, okay, so that gives you a little bit of perspective. Yeah, reference point. Yeah, sure. reference point. And so I'm like, okay, uh, but I knew my husband wanted it, so let's see if we can figure out how to make this work. And um, so we reached out to Alan and Courtney Trimble, who, um, for those who aren't local kind of like a celebrity in Jinx because he had won, I don't know, 15 a, state championships or yeah. yeah, something like that. And, yeah. um, they agreed to split it with us. Um, then there were some things that happened. Um, coach Trimble was supposed to be retiring and then going back to, um, going back to work for, um, the school. Um, but this is in that time frame where some other stuff was happening with coach Tremble and he was diagnosed right. with ALS. And ALS, so yeah. there were some retirement things happening and then some health issues happening. And so they ended up um, not thinking that that was a good idea to split this land, which it, it turned out absolutely. It was a good idea. And, and they're um, in leadership at our church and just, we love the Trembles. And um, so anyway, we're like, oh, bummer. Now we're going to either have to say goodbye to this property or we're going to have to move on and find someone else who might want to split it with us. Right. And right. we were in that process when my mother-in-law passed away from cancer. And my father-in-law had passed away two years earlier of cancer. And, wow. um, you know, in their 
seven, age 70 and 72 was when they passed okay. away. So they had been a principal and a teacher and they had saved for retirement. Mm. So they had, you know, this nest egg that they were going to be using for retirement that yeah. now was being split in the estate between my husband and his sister. And mm. we were able to then put a down payment on the property and yeah. that is how we got the property. Wow. Um, and so we have since planted over a hundred pine trees because they lived in the piney woods. We planted yes. we planted a hundred dogwood seedlings because it was um, Lake Lydia where they lived was the home of the dogwood trails. Oh wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. And so, but none of the seedlings that we planted of dogwoods made it on the property. I don't, oh. I don't know why, but we have, we planted some bigger dogwoods. So I think we have six dogwoods yeah, and that was okay. kind of in honor of Boomy and Nanny, that. which is their grandparent names, Boomy and Nanny, yeah. um, because they, you know, they worked hard their whole life and um, they were able to, you know, leave an inheritance that we have yeah. then been able to come in pretty up the property and now we let the community use it so yeah and i i'll just tag in on that one that that uh this what they have done with this property is just it's allows um my wife is a photographer and so it allows photographers to come in and just capture <coughs> excuse me capture moments for people and that, that last a lifetime yeah. right and so that's the fun about photography is that you're you know, you're sitting, you know, sitting down or you're whatever, walking through and you're pausing for these little moments and capturing these moments that you, an image, you know, brings a memory and, and it and just shares those moments of seniors and graduates and marriage. And it's just so fun to see other people coming out there that, uh, you know, then our, our family has come to some family photos out there too. And so, Steven, it's fun because we get to, we didn't know we were going to move out here. That's a whole nother story that I don't really have time for, but, um, sure. we, now we live on the, so that we have a barn. Now we tore down the dilapidated houses. We cleaned up the property. Yeah. It took about two or three years to get it cleaned up. Um, and then we built our house out here. So we've been living out here for five years. Um, it'll be five years in October. And, um, it's fun because we get to look out and we get to see, um, people, getting engaged. I don't know how, I mean, yes. had countless engagements out here. And so oh, the family is that. hiding in the bushes or hiding behind our house or, you know, yes. while the photographer's hiding. And, um, right. and then we, uh, we've seen multiple, you know, confetti cannons go off to say you're having a boy or a girl or, you know, we're Gender just, parties. Oh, that's great. yeah, it's so fun. I had a call this week. Someone wants to shoot and she's a recording artist from Nashville, country music, person and okay. wants to shoot a video out here her songs about wow. a creek and we have a beautiful creek clearwater creek that flows through here so yeah it's it is totally of the lord and that we have so four hours every day where people the public can come out for free if they want to walk around if they want to pray if they want to um you know sit and read the bible in the adirondack chairs it's just it's pretty for oklahoma i will say yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is. <laughs> the creek, the creek running in the back there, which I guess that's how the coal, the name Cold yep. Creek came yep. for it. But the creek running in the back there, the, um, and I love it. I love the, the pines. That's been a nice addition, oh, good. Uh, especially for folks with the Christmas, you know, when yep. have some Christmas options, they want the piney trees. Yep. So. Well, good. Well, okay. So let's, let's, we're wrap, well, on the home stretch hey. here. Um, bring us to this exciting new venture. What, 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 uh, what about launching what you're doing now? The consulting and, yeah, so, and executive coaching. What does that look yeah, like? So and how, I, how's that journey been? Um, I sold the brand in December of 22 to our largest multi-unit franchisee. Um, again, okay. we could spend an hour on that, but I won't. Um, and <laughs> we'll have you back again. We'll have, have more conversations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll um, and so I'm still working for the brand for three years. So oh, I, cool. they contracted me to be the brand ambassador and, you know, I'm yeah. kind of the historian that knows kind of what's happened. And so they keep right. me around for a meeting or two a week and I'm going to be helping with the podcast, um, ironically, um, in the coming, yeah. coming months. Um, but I really, I took probably when I hired a president in just between friends, that was in December of 21, my workload went from probably 60 hours a week to 30 hours a week. That's and, good, yeah. um, so it opened up my time when people would say, Hey, Shannon, can I pick your brain, uh, for me to say yes. 
And so for probably 18 months before the transaction happened, I found myself consistently coaching six people for free um, Mm. just every month. And so as I was thinking about, well, what am I going to do next? I'm not going to go twiddle my thumbs. I'm not going to be a full-time grandmother. Um, I have three grandkids and one on the way right now. And um, yeah, that's all like the oldest grandchild is two and a half and we're about to have four. So <laughs> we'll still be three by the time this next one comes. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, but ne- none of them live here. So I wasn't going to be a full-time grandmother. And so what am I just asking the Lord, inquiring of the Lord, asking for revelation? Like what, what are your, where can you use me, Lord? Yeah. And um, so I was looking at other CEO positions. I was looking at buying another business um, and then, of course, looking at coaching. But if I can be honest with you, this is my pride. Um, I felt like coaching would be a great thing to do. But my title, and maybe this is something a lot of men struggle with, my identity mm-hmm. had been in I'm the CEO. Right. And yes, I'm a daughter of the king. And yes, I love the Lord, but I don't sure. want to admit this to anyone that a lot of my identity is in who I am as a leader. And mm-hmm. um, I was like, wow, I'm going to, if I choose to do coaching, I'm going to, my title's going to be coach. And it just doesn't have the same zing as CEO. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, so I, I struggled with that. If I'm being honest, I'm like, ah, Mm. that doesn't feel good. Um, but the Lord over time, you know, cause I kind of sat in his presence for probably six or seven months. Like, okay, Lord, like, let me hear from you on what my next step is. And, um, it was good to have that time down, that downtime. I had, um, I had, a friend come over who actually my president for my just between friends, she came over and she was visiting with me and I was telling her kind of what my options were. And and she said, Shannon, can I tell you something? And she's that person who um, like puts me in my place sometimes. (laughs) And she's the person who is the no person when everyone else is saying yes, she's like, what are you thinking? Um, And so she's the tell it like it is. And she said, when you talk about this, as a path. And when you talk about this as a path, your eyes don't light up as when you talk about your coaching business. And mm-hmm. I already had named the the coaching business Shine Executive Coaching because yeah. um again my sister gave me the verse um and it was just I need to grab it. I'm going to read it for you. Yeah, go for okay. it. This is from the message. And it's funny. I heard John Maxwell speak um, this weekend. I was in Scottsdale and he was speaking at um, Christ Church in the Valley. And we were there and he used this verse. He's written a new book and he used this verse, but it's Matthew 5, 14 through 16 from the message. Oh, that's great. Here's another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Mm. So I knew, I knew that if I did a coaching business, it was going to be called shine. And so, um, when she said, when you talk about the, when you talk about the coaching business, your eyes light up. And so that is in September of, um, 2023, I went full time on the coaching business and it is a startup. So, um, I am, I'm like, wow, why did I sell a, (laughs) A business I was working 30 hours a week. Now I'm working 60 hours a week. Working, working more again, right? right? These 12 yeah. hour days are not, <laughs> um, but I don't have children at home. You know, I do it to myself, sure. quite frankly. Um, I'm just very driven, but it is, it's been fun. It's been challenging. It's been fun. It's been challenging. And I'm sure it will continue to be fun and challenging. <laughs> um, yes. So, yeah. So that's what I'm doing right now. I currently have um, 13 paying clients and um, a lot of them are 
franchisors. Um, some of them are what I call mom and pop business owners. They're doing six figures. They want to do seven figures. Really, yep. really a lot of the content that we talk about is scalability mindset. Um, mm-hmm. How do you get from where you are now to where you really want to go? And and what sure. is the process to get there? So that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. We know what I love, Shannon, about that. I think you hit it on the head with the identity. Yeah. I think there's so many people that could be men or women that are, that are, you know, we're tied to, um, you know, even back in the days of your te- as a teacher, yep. right? Well, I am a, I am a teacher. Well, okay. Is that, are you a teacher or a person who would learn how to teach people well, yep. you know, transfer information, have, you know, those kind of things. I think so that's so good as we're challenged to recognize, and this is my challenge to those are listeners or viewers that they would, that you would take a second today. And then what Shannon has shared is that, you know, the Lord is your source yes. of being your identity, Amen. right? As we find our identity in him. And maybe you need to take a moment and just ask him to just help reframe that, reframe your identity in him. And that the title you've given yourself or somebody else has given you doesn't mean anything compared to, you know, follower of the king or certain, you know, Christ follower, son, daughter, you know, of him. And so uh, I feel like my I need to tell myself that daily. Mm-hmm. Like that's yeah. who I am daily. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the confession, the, the identity you know, mindset, you mentioned the mindset thing. I'm, you know, take, I'll take us both back to little uh, coach JC action, right? Like, you know, like the confession of winning ourselves, making, making sure, you know, why I'm here, what am I doing? You know, those kind of things I think are so helpful um, to reframe our mindset of what we believe about ourselves. And that's, that's a huge win, you know, each day. So that's good. Let's, let's do a little pop. I call it popcorn or a rapid fire here at the end. Um, some fun things. We have a few minutes. I know I'm watching the okay. clock uh, tight, so I know where you're at on your time frame. But uh, what is your favorite favorite meal? Favorite food? Ooh, wow, boy, I like to eat. I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying to think Mexican food for sure. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay, and then uh, I know it's not. I know local and international, national won't care about this. But what's your favorite local one to go to? <laughs> it's a hole in the wall place called Los Mariachis. Ooh, I haven't heard there's, of this There's one. a couple. This? It's so okay. good. Um, okay. I think they I have one know. in Broken Arrow and they have one okay. They have one in Jinx right on Highway okay. 75, right yep. before you get to the Glenpool exit. It's oh, Los, I know. Okay. I know, I know Los it Mariachis. It's so good. Okay. Very affordable. All right. They're fast. Their fajitas are yummy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay. I got a new place to check yeah. it out. I love it. All right. Um, what is your favorite uh, place you've gotten to travel in life? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Toss up between Italy and Greece. Ah, uh, I I've been to both, and I understand why you're, why you're saying that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we are, went. To they're Santorini, amazing places. Probably most romantic oh, Santorini. Yes. But favorite in terms of things to do and see the history and all of that. Probably Italy. Italy. Yeah. Where, where cut it? Did you go to Rome? We went to. We went to probably. Uh, we went to Positano, we went to Capri, we went to oh, man. probably six or seven different places. Rome, oh, I love Florence. it. Florence, yeah. Oh, we need, we, we need to, I need to, Rebecca, I need to get to talk, share stories about that with you yeah, at some point. That's absolutely. awesome. Um, okay, let's see here. So now tell me about the, your, okay. Now the, I have a little insight on this one, but do you remember your a, uh, biggest prize you have won in a contest? See if see if they nice. line up what I think it is. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Won. <laughs> I won a Mercedes for two a two year lease on a Mercedes. That's a whole yeah other you did. Story. <laughs> yeah you did. That was awesome. JC told me that one. <laughs> did, was it on the podcast or did he just tell you? No, I haven't had him on yet. Oh, We're going to. God. We're setting him up. He's coming. Yeah. yeah. No, was, he was. He, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a uh, was a long transformation, uh, hard hardcore transformation yes. recruiting it was a boot camp. Boot camp, yes. yeah, class, yep. yeah. So um, <laughs> I love that for sure, and help fifty-two other people get there. <laughs> That's right. See, you've you've been influencing people from the get-go yep. all the way around. Yep. I love it. Oh, man. oh, I love it. Well, Shannon, I want to say thank you for your time. Um, we could probably talk for another hour. I think I love the the stories, yeah. time, and everything. But thank you for your time, and just uh, we just I think I think the theme today is just to be the light, yeah. right? To share the light, be the light. We're called to be and to shine with the love of Jesus. Yeah. Um, would you mind praying us out? No, for those, for I would listeners? love that. Lord, we just come to you right now and we thank you so much just for the ministry of podcasts, the ministry of your words through other people uh, that we can listen, we can be encouraged, we can be inspired. 
uh, by what we hear. Um, Lord, we ask that you um, don't let this fall on the hard ground, that something that has happened in this podcast today, tomorrow, the next day will be a seed that is sown in someone's life for your glory. Lord, we love you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. And if somebody wants to track you down and find out your information, they want to talk to you about coaching yep. or the story, how can they find the you? The best way is LinkedIn okay. or, or my email, Shannon at shineexecutivecoaching.com. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm on all the places. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. So very good. Yep. Very good. And uh, on LinkedIn, I was just there Shannon a second Wilburn. ago. Was, yeah. Shannon Wilburn. Mm-hmm. So you can type in linkedin.com. I think it's forward slash Shannon Wilburn. Yep. Um, all one word there. Yeah. Wonderful. We'll, we'll put that in the, uh, in the notes okay. in below the podcast for people Thank and, you, uh, say, I just want to say thanks again. Thanks so much for your time. And we'll, we'll have to connect again. I would and love have it. This another podcast more. And then also love to take with Rebecca and you, we'll have some, uh, some Italy travel stories. Yeah, at some that'd point. Be fun. <laughs> awesome. Blessings to Thank you. Have a fantastic you. day. And, uh, thanks for tuning in to the GB America podcast. We'll see you next time. Share and, uh, share your, tell your friends about it. Looking forward to the next GB America podcast. We'll see you then. You've been listening to the GEB America podcast. Share the GEB America podcast on your social media and tell your friends to subscribe. Follow and share on GEB America Facebook, X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Gladius. Gladius is your full service data solutions company from custom software and AI to database content management. Find out what Gladius can do for your business or ministry today. Visit GladiusSolutions.com and set up a demo. The statements made by Energize Health and its clients do not constitute medical or other professional advice or services. Before undertaking any course of treatment, you should consult with your doctor. Transformation and fat loss are based on starting health metric calculations. Results may vary. We are John and Chelsea Jubilee. What we have is simple, it's scientific, it's sustainable. We have created Energized Health with the desire to change the world, starting with the most important one, which is yours. Our patent pending science of intercellular hydration will transform and supercharge your cells, resulting in optimal health. Log on now to EnergizedHealth.com. That's EnergizedHealth.com.